I think, you know, my workshops are almost like a mini love affair sometimes. Fire, fire! Fire, 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 Okay, with this group you're going to tell people about your first love. I like to think of the workshops and the training as almost like, you know, loving back. Fire, 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 fire. Okay, what you're going to do with this group is just to tell people what are you expecting to get out of the next two and a half days? What are you hoping to achieve from this workshop in the next two and a half days for yourself? For me, it's the first time that I take part in an HIV AIDS workshop, besides, you know, in school, but, you know, actually in the working environment, and I've heard so much about this workshop. I think um, what the workshop aims to achieve um, interested me, but when I heard the name Peter Boozer, I wasn't quite sure because I hadn't really heard of him. The workshop is very intimate. It's almost like a relationship between me and the people that I'm working with, and we're sharing very kind of major aspects of ourselves, which would be similar to a relationship. You're kind of, on the basis of trust, you're kind of exposing yourself to another person. And I think, you know, that's the basis of all relationships, is you find somebody special and they, they change your life. <laughs> Just to share something about myself, you know, we said this is going to be a workshop that we're going to personalize. The reason why I got involved with, with AIDS work, as I said, in 1987 as a cancer is I was actually diagnosed HIV positive in 1985. You know, I can very clearly remember when I was diagnosed, the doctor grew, drew a graph and he said, you know, this is your immune system and then this axis is time and basically you're going to go down at 45 degrees. You know, you're going to, that is your life. You're going, you, you diagnosed now, you're going to develop AIDS, you're going to die. So that was a sort of future, in a sense, that I had. And so my motivation for getting involved with AIDS is I didn't want anybody to go through a situation of being diagnosed in a vacuum without any support, without any sort of real proper information. So I wanted to, in a way, give something back. And um, here we are today. What we really need in AIDS work is to sort of change that us and them kind of idea and start to look at HIV and AIDS as something that could happen to us. Everyone who had sex in the last two months. <laughs> That's also one of the main methodologies of this workshop is in a way to turn that other into us you know, and to get people to look at HIV not as something that's happening out there to other people, but almost to put themselves in the centre of it and to start saying, how is this going to affect me? Everyone who made sex without a condom. <laughs> So I'd like you just literally to close your eyes for two minutes and um, relax and just go back in your mind and just think, when did I first hear about it? What year was it? How young was I? How old was I? Where was I? What sort of situation or setting was I at school? And what picture did I have at that time? What picture did I have of HIV and AIDS? Okay. I started hearing it in 1890. It, yeah, it was through meeting yeah. friends from, uh -huh. a, from a college where, where there was one lady who was 
Dagon is positive. Okay, so and that first contact with a positive person, yes. 1990, yeah. So mm -hmm. I started thinking, can I see this person and mm -hmm. find out how does she feel mm -hmm. and where did she get the disease? Mm -hmm. And through these questions, we got it. It came from in America, like a monkey to a person where they had sexual intercourse. Okay, so America and then sex between monkeys and people. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you weren't having any sex with monkeys at the Not time. <laughs> the starting point is sort of the history and perceptions, how people understand the epidemic, how they see it. Um, so it's not just presenting the history to people and saying in 1982 this happened, in 1984 that happened, you know, but it's actually getting each individual in the workshop to say, when did I first hear about HIV? How did I get to hear about it? And what picture did I have? I heard about it in the early 80s, but okay. my first close contact was in 1990 when I heard that my neighbor was dying about HIV and AIDS. Okay. Uh, for me, it was like knowing her background. Yeah. I thought that, oh, her actions lead to that. Uh. So as long as you stick to one, or stick to one partner uh. and you don't do all those things, mm. you will be free of getting that disease. So your neighbor, you felt, was had been sleeping around, yeah. not sticking to one partner. Yeah. So it was your action or your lifestyle that yeah. put you at risk, yeah. The workshop was, uh, you know, a revelation to me personally. And I found that, like everybody else, I'd managed to build a little wall of denial around myself. And that to break through that was essential if you're really going to think about it properly. And uh, I realized the power of this personalized approach. It had an extraordinary effect on everybody in the group that I was participating with. Also, the power of the positive facilitator was very, very um, tangible. And uh, so from there, I decided to use that workshop and to employ Peter to do all the training for IBIS as our common starting point. Um, you know, the work that I'm doing currently, this sort of AIDS and development focus, I would say started in the mid-90s, of just looking at how HIV would impact on NGOs and development broadly, but also on individuals and families, and also what can we do about it? Because I think, you know, what's important for me is not just looking at the impact, but saying, all right, this is what is... the this is what the impact is going to be. How can we respond to this? What can we do? So the, the line I took was instead of assuming that as a development worker, you can automatically work with HIV AIDS issues, that we rather needed to first put our own house in order and that the very first step should be for everybody to be given an opportunity to assess their own personal risks and responsibilities in relation to HIV AIDS and then to work slowly forwards to actually working with the issues in the workplace and in, develop, in the development work. All right, so the first thing I'd like you to do is to close your eyes and just get in touch with yourself. Just breathe in and out. With each breath that you're taking out, just feel yourself relaxing and just becoming comfortable. And then the very first thing I'd like you to think about is you yourself have gone for an HIV test and that you are now, you've had your test result back and your test result is positive. So I'd just like you to spend a, t a bit of time thinking, I am positive. And just think, what would my reaction be? How would I react? if I found that I was HIV positive. And just think of informing your mother that you're HIV positive and just think of how you would tell her, what words would you use, what time of day would you talk to her, and how would your mother react to that news.
The next person I would like you to think about are people are your brothers and sisters. To think about all your brothers and sisters. And just in your mind, go to them one by one. Go to them one at a time. And just inform your brothers and your sisters one by one that you HIV positive. For those of you who have got children, I'd like you to picture your children. Where are they today? What age are they? And just think of going to your child as a parent and telling your child that you're living with HIV. Okay, when you're ready, I'd like you to just slowly start taking deeper and deeper breaths. With each breath that you're taking, you're coming back into the room. Maybe move your fingers gently, move your toes gently. And then when you're ready, to lift up your heads and then slowly open your eyes. And then what I'd like you to do is just to look around the room and to choose one person that you feel <coughs> secure with, that you feel safe with, and just spend the next 15 minutes talking to one person in this room about your own feelings that this exercise has brought up. <coughs> so again, you know, just move your chair so that you're quite private. People can go into corners, etc. But just choose any person that you feel comfortable with to discuss, and not academically, but just to discuss how you felt. So, and then I said to him, well, he, he came to me and I said, okay, wait, come back next time, next month. And every time I told him next month, and then later on he gave up, and, and I didn't go for that test up to 98. It's really quite frightening. And... Uh, looking at uh, for the, the, the possibility of reporting to my wife and uh, telling her that I'm HIV positive, then she will be asking questions as to how do I got HIV positive. Then I said, no, I'm not lying, because I went to the, to the, uh, to the, to the hospital and get, I get my result, and they told me that I'm HIV positive. It's a very intimate journey, it's a very emotional journey. You're taking people through a very personal journey and you're just taking them and getting them to look at HIV and AIDS from a very personal perspective of how it could affect them and, and their world rather than how it affects everybody outside of yourself. It is the end of your life, no? I thought this disease was for, for unfaithful people. It can just contract unfaithful people. Me having a steady relationship, I didn't care less because I felt I was safe in my relationship. Then I went inside, the counselor sort of discussed with me and he took out my result. And the only thing I could hear, and that was enough for me, was like, you are HIV. I just hit the P. And then everything was just like blown out of my mind. My head was blank. But then when time passed by, it was around about a month later that I come in terms with my positiveness. And I was just on my bed and I remembered not long ago before I was diagnosed, I, I was, we went to a workshop that, that EBS held in Haya Lodge and I met Peter and it was just like a story coming out from the back of my head and I could hear Peter clearly, his voice clearly in my head, speaking to us that 
I am an HIV positive man and I was living with the virus for 17 years. So it was like, just like an eye opener for me. It was like, man, it opened my eye and I started from that point of time, I started to think positively and I started to, to, to ask myself if this man that was telling me that he was living for, with the virus for 17 years, if he didn't lie to me, then I got what it takes to live my life also positive. And it was like, I get encouragement to, I made my, my, my conscious decision to go out there to the community and help the positive living people with the same kind of problem to come out and just be like me. I thank you very much, people. And just to, to share with you, I mean, that is something I didn't know. You know, it was a very special message for me. So Vicky, thank you for that. I mean, just sharing that, you know, with me because it, it, it made me realize yet again how important it is, you know, to, to give people hope. It encouraged me, it gave me new strength and, and new energy. So I'd like to just thank Vicky and just say as a presentation as, and as a sharing of a story, it was fantastic. So congratulations. <laughs> We also look at the basic facts around HIV, which most people think would be very boring. But again, we involve the participants and in a way work off their knowledge base. And most importantly, is almost like taking it a subject that is quite medical and technical and doing it in a way that is very, very accessible, very easily understood. You know, so taking quite complicated basic facts about transmission of HIV and making it fun, you know, like people doing exercises about blood transmission and using drugs and being involved in accidents. Yeah, okay, now we know that Vicky is HIV positive. Now she is cut and bleeding and these other people have fresh open wounds. So we're having basically the blood from her hand is dripping into your neck wound. The blood from her elbow wound is dripping into your shoulder wound. The blood from her shoulder wound is getting onto your head, from her head wound is onto your chest, from your head is onto there. So we can see that one HIV positive person in a scenario like this, you're getting an HIV positive person, the body fluid through an activity of an accident or whatever is then entering the bloodstream of other people. So this is not a transfusion scenario, but just an accident. You know, so much of HIV and AIDS is medicalized and the language is so sort of technical and medical and full of acronyms. And I think it's basically from when I was a counselor, you know, I needed in a way to develop the ability to within a, a 50 minute counseling session is to give people a very clear, concise, easily understandable understanding of what HIV is, what happens to you once you're infected, how the d disease progresses. So what was interesting today when we did the medical facts, a lot of the people in the feedback said that they really appreciated stuff that they talk about themselves in their own work but don't really understand. All right, so this is the HIV virus. And then we were saying that the cell is the CD4 cell. It looks like this. and it has these receptors. So what happens is HIV comes in and it attaches, this would enter there. So the HIV comes and attaches itself to the cell. So we have HIV, it's in the bloodstream, it comes and it attaches itself to your cell, and then it enters the cell and becomes part of the CD4 cell. And only once it has fused with your CD4 cell, it can then replicate and make more viruses. And what it does is it actually, after a while, it kills off your CD4. I also think that now, 
you know, being HIV positive and, and being open about that, it brings a particular sort of reality to the work that I do. So it's not just talking about HIV in a sort of academic way, but kind of bringing myself and my own experience as a positive person into that kind of forum. The other things is, you know, obviously having worked from the 80s until now, 2004, and a lot of it has been as a trainer and a facilitator, I've sort of really had time to, to look at two things. What, firstly, what works in terms of HIV and AIDS education. So a lot of the exercises in that that I use are things that I have developed and worked with over time and I know actually address the issue in the right way. I promise you we're not going to read them and you know you can trust us on that with confidentiality. It's your private letter to yourself to remind you of some of the things that you thought about. What can you personally do about HIV and AIDS in your own life? And you're going to address it to yourself. Dear David. Dear Vicky. Um, it's now beginning of February. In some time during April, I'll ask Alexia to just post your letters to you as a reminder and a follow-up of this workshop. So don't be surprised when you receive a letter from yourself. <laughs> I mean, what has been great for me is, you know, as I said, this long journey from being a counsellor to a trainer, to getting involved with you know, non-governmental and developmental issues, um, to issues around people living with HIV and AIDS and some of the big international conferences. And you know, for the first time in my sort of AIDS life, if you like, it's all starting to come together because the things that I really love are teaching. You know, so essentially I see myself as a teacher and I love it and I get a lot of satisfaction from it. So, I'm liking the fact that I'm doing a lot of sort of facilitation and education and training work because I get a lot of sort of very positive feedback and I, I really love doing that. Uh, for me, um, it was much more participatory than mm. I thought. I thought mm -hmm. there would be lectures or, you know... Mm. Me being boring. Yes, you'd be talking most of the time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and that was mm. very good for me. Yeah. I, it was like participatory and... Mm. Everything was like fun. We mm. we had fun, mm. and, that, and that was an important and that was, norm. was yeah. a good part mm. of all mm. part mm. the workshop. So one can learn through having fun and through participation yeah. and learning from each other. Yeah. How did you find? It has been a good learning experience, and oh. I I like that it's very accessible. Oh. I like the fact that you haven't used a lot of slides and professional oh. statistics and yeah. diagrams. <laughs> Because I've seen a lot of those and you just end up staring and you don't know mm. what you're seeing. So I really yeah. enjoy your little drawings. Mm. And this was really nice because I had to learn some other things like this viral load. Mm. You know, I've been hearing about this, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah. So I've learned about this. If someone yeah. asks me, since I'm a positive speaker, yeah. I'll say, no, this is this and this is this. Yeah. So it was really good. Uh, as a person, mm. I didn't know much about myself, mm. let alone mm. know the person next to me. Mm. So this is, what, this is why I call it an eye and a mind opener. We're trying this now as a pilot thing to actually try and roll out this training methodology to other organizations to see whether they find it also useful. We found it innovative. There, are ways, there were ways in which we followed up that made it very effective. So we have now just finished this workshop where we were giving a demonstration, if you like, to other uh, organizations, people who are in um, decision-making roles in, 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 with regard to training, to see if they also felt that this was innovative and, and worth doing. And now we've trained, uh, um, we're training a, um, a group of trainers, um, more than half of whom are HIV positive themselves. Uh, and I, hopefully, if it's valuable and if people want to do it, then this training methodology will spread I think that is what is the satisfaction for me, is the fact that, you know, you can walk away from something and feel that you have made a real difference, not only to individual lives, but also to the, an organization or the way that an organization responds to it. And I think, yeah, that's the reward, is, you know, to be able to get into bed in the evening and think, I've made a difference. 
I've changed people, I've changed the way they look and understand something, and um, I've changed lives and possibly saved lives. So I think I can sleep well on, on that sort of thought. Looking at the exercise which we held in, in the room of mm -hmm. thinking of the families, the parents, and on how to take the information back. Mm -hmm. And especially looking at the region where I'm, I'm coming from, Capri, where there is ignorance, people don't want to come up with their status. Um, this is a good an example which I'm going to give feedback on how this workshop has, has gone through. And I would like to thank the facilitator for his personal um, information which he shared with us for the last past two days. I really appreciated it. It has been worthwhile. Thank you very much. I think often those of us living with HIV, we work in isolation. We work in our support groups, but we feel quite isolated. The wonderful thing about this workshop has been that we've been able to work together with people who are not necessarily positive and, uh, and have found uh, an incredible warmth, an incredible amount of support, and that really gives hope. When I came, I realized that um, the way it's presented, it's more personalized. I haven't been to a workshop that challenges you to this extent to actually look within yourself. When I first attended this workshop, it was like um, HIV is, you know, it's people who, it's for people, you know, like prostitutes and all kind of those people, you know. And I thought it's because of their actions that they are getting that. But after I attended the workshop, then it changed my whole paradigm. And then I said, okay, it could happen to anyone. It could happen to my family. It could, it could happen to me. One workshop we did was wheelbarrows, so we said to people, what is it? And they said, wheelbarrows, you know, when somebody's like on their hands and the other person is holding them. <laughs> then they came up with this new one called grasshopper. <laughs> so we said, what is grasshopper? And the woman said, ah, you know, man, it's just wheelbarrow, but with hopping. <laughs> so, so, so it can be fun, and I think... You know, laughter does help, you know, if you can make it humorous, if you can make it fun.